we trust each other. If a call is made, we follow it. That fearless team spirit means that on game day, we're twice as strong. There was one fight we were like down three on Anubis, and Rockets was asking like, should I trans, should I trans? I was like, yeah, yeah, we can do this. I got the Genji fight. Yeah, this should be it. Finally, it looks I like San Francisco so. Shock have broken this defense with only a minute remaining. They're gonna commit the transcendence here, however. Batty Ooh. not close to picking up I mean, Nobi goes down. This is just supreme confidence in Jake's abilities. And get a translocator, wow. but he gets Baby Bay, who's reinforcing, and the Houston Outlaws wow. survive. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Get your memes out because, yes, indeed, we are covering the Jake Rat here today. Jake gets a lot of criticism for his best hero being Junkrat, but I think he single handedly swayed the meta where multiple top players and top teams were emulating his Junkrat controlling style. And in fact, London had to go to those bag of tricks in order to overcome them in the playoffs, even though the Houston Outlaws fell short of their playoff goals through a heroically fought stage one, I think Jake is the best junk rat in the world. You can call me biased because we're cool with Jake, of course. Let me know your picks for the best junk rat in the world if you think it should go to profit. I think Libro's also a very unsung hero on the role. But for my money, the attitude, flair, and playmaking that Jake brings to a character puts him at the top as an innovator. The same way I think about Miro on the Winston back in the Apex days, I think Jake's junk rat is in a similar category. Today I want to focus on some of the more particularly interesting parts of Jake's Junkrat play. Accuracy, flanks, rip tires are the three pillars of how he turns an Overwatch League match into a ranked matchmaking match where the enemy team seemingly can't get out of spawn due to the barrage of spam coming their way. Real recognizes real. Jake has some sick aim on this character. You have to give him respect. I mean, look at this midair that he hits on Genji. This type of repeated accuracy with the nades is the stuff that Shimada nightmares are making made of. The clip that they were talking about in the Overwatch League interview they did with Jake and Raucus, where they made a clutch play with Transcendence, allowed for Jake to take the battle to the skies, leaping up in the air with Winston to hit multiple nades onto his face and out-damaged the Mercy Pocket. Being able to outdo healing when you don't miss his primary fire can mark a tank, or really anything, for death. And it's his skill and proficiency with using the kit of Junkrat that's going to be built building up his rip tire just about every single fight. I won't point it out past this point, but notice how many times he opens a fight with a rip tire and hits so many nades and mines that he ends the fight with another rip tire. It's the effectiveness of the Jake Rat that allows for Houston to break the meta in a way and win games without a tracer player because the sphere of influence that Jake has on the battle makes their team basically undiveable because anything that comes towards them, Jake has the skill to punish with raw firepower. This was the hard lesson that the London Spitfire had to learn in their first outing against the Houston Outlaws in the regular stage one season. Simply keeping Jake alive long enough nets a few frags here or there. And even though he dies in this mid fight, they're stalling out the point. And if you saw it carefully, he actually hit Prophet's Genji on the wall climb up going through the window. Mine jumped himself up towards him and mined him off screen. Now Jake's back into the fray in a defensive posture and he's just cleaning up kills off screen the entire time. You just can't dive this character. Mind you, that fight that they came back stalled out in one pretty much at a big disadvantage, netted Jake a rip tire and Linkser a pulse bomb. They use both of those ultimates as sort of a eco team fight, keeping London Spitfires back pressed against the wall so they can't really effectively charge up ultimates. By the time this next team fight comes in, they have their ultimates as well, so they have resources to throw aggressively into the engagement. Mooma's out there disrupting stuff. Cool Matt's able to dive, and what do you focus? That team fight's basically over, and guess what? Jake's about to have another rip tire again. Okay, so we set the table. We know how proficient he is with his weapon. If you're in that medium range, no matter where he is on the map, as long as he finds himself there, he's very confident in his abilities to land those nades to burst down targets in front of him. He just has to find himself in that pocket, and that's what he keeps doing. He actually is a bit of a flanking junk rat, which I think is the key Jake rat play style. He's going to find himself coming down a lane and boom, Wakid, your DPS is out of the play. 
Meanwhile, he's zoning out Jay Hong on the Zenyatta. And well, when the enemy team doesn't have a Junkrat, well, his team's allowed to play way more aggressively. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Let's see him go take the same exact positioning against London. This time, Gesture overstays his welcome on the Orisa. By the way, Junkrat, one of the best counters to Orisa. Whittles her down, charges up the Rip Tire. And although this tire ends up not killing anyone, everyone in the Overwatch League is so afraid of Jake's tires that they run away and focus the tire. This bought all of the ground for the Houston Outlaws to take the point and Spitfire are locked back into a corner. Now they're trying to retake, but from the position he was in, this is the key Jake Rat play that you have to pay attention closely to or you might miss it. That's a Jake Rat. He goes into the back line and takes out closer, does end up dying for it, but that's the incredible disruption that Jake can have with his Junk Rat. With the Mercy and Spawn, there's almost no way that they're gonna be able to fight their way back and stall out the fight. Zen without Transcendence is just not enough here healing, and Jake playing in this aggro way allows for the pressure to be taken off Lynxer, which we're going to see in full effect again as he goes up for another Jake Rat flank, storming the castle, looking to steal the family jewels in true Junkrat fashion. He bombs the bunker of the backline support duo, being the battering ram that breaks open the fight, which is an important term that I like to make. That opening play, sort of like when you're playing billiards or pool, that spreads the balls all over Jake making those plays and creating a mid fight because obviously he died in that scenario yet again But he did so much critical damage and got a kill on a support that the resources go into awry and that makes for McCree Which if you're a fan of the old-school monthly melee ZP used to call McCree the janitor because he would clean up everything in the mid fight We all know how good McCree is in deathmatch mode, right? Well when you get him in those 3v3s 4v4 scenarios and you don't have enough resources to dive your star player. Well, now Linkser just cleans up everything after that. And that's the key distinction with this comp because in theory, it's a control comp, right? Because you have two passive style DPS, but what Jake does is take these tactical opportunities to break open the fight, much like a dive comp would have to, but do it with his damage. Do it with his range lethality to give the space for Linkser to do his thing, even at the cost of his own life. So that's a typical Jake rat play. Now let's take a look at his incredibly impactful tires. This was the Outlaws Dynasty match on Eichenwald. They had Clockwork in, who was trying his best to fill the shoes of the almighty Lynxer. They had just failed to push rather spectacularly, honestly. And Dynasty had both support ults and Outlaws had zero, but they had Jake's rip tire. He flanks underneath, pops the tire, runs it up the wall. Toby tries to pop Valkyrie to get away, but the tire goes up too fast, blows up the Valkyrie and their star DPS Fleta with no mercy there to res him to bring him back. Jaehong does end up getting the kill, but he gets quite critically wounded, putting him far out of the play, and it's easy cleanup after that. Jake's rip tire were having so much success in the Overwatch League that a team like the Boston Uprising was paying them a ton of respect, would back up entirely in order to try to catch the Rip Tire and shoot it, which they did effectively do, but it's really hard because the Rip Tire can get value anywhere you need it to be. It can blow up the front line or blow up the back line. Either way, it can be quite reliable value, especially when we're talking about Jake's signature map, Eichenwald, where him and Lynxer are some of the highest fragging DPS in the league. Now, you may have some question marks whether or not Jake's going to be able to transition this Junkrat play into stage two with Junkrat and Mercy nerfed. I think he will. As long as the map is suitable for Junkrat, I think Jake is so good on it that the mine nerf won't have that significant of a impact to his game. And I hope to see more Jake Rat moving forward. Well, that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please leave it a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're gonna wanna hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Linked in the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.